Yo. All right. So that was a couple of days ago, weeks. I somehow had the feeling I wanted to dye my head red, uh, <laughs> hair red. And the reason I wanted to do that was probably because I wanted to force change upon me. Whereas the change that was needed was most likely on the inside. And I ended up buying like natural color for your hair with henna and stuff in it. But I didn't use it because I thought, I mean, I would feel kind of ridiculous dyeing my head r r hair red. <laughs> and, you know, what part of me wanted that? And then you look at, I've mentioned this before, like gothic people, and you look at, you know, all kinds of strange figures that you sometimes see with piercings everywhere and their whole tattoos, like, Sometimes they actually look like reptiles and then you think what happened to them that they try to become some kind of reptile? And then you hear these stories about reptiloids and stuff and then you think well maybe these things do exist but in a different way than we think. Maybe we think they're some kind of alien but what if, you know, we're just these kind of humans with a soul in it. And if we keep feeding our demons, you know, there might be things that enter our bodies as children and they constantly try to convince us to do certain things. And then we end up looking like night elves or something because something is actually inside of us that's trying to bring us away from our nature because through us they can feel alive. Because they also, they're afraid to die or something, right? And they don't have a body, so they need a body to do something with. And you can say in spiritual terms, it's a bit your responsibility to make sure that what you're doing is not nourishing all these evil sides in yourself. Because I'm pretty sure that if you would take a person that turned himself into some kind of, you know, reptile, and you would take that person and would give it ayahuasca and they would have some higher wisdom suddenly and they would look into the mirror they would think to themselves what the fuck have I become? Like, I lost myself along the way and I allowed voices in my head to convince me that I'm some kind of evil reptile and probably at the basis of all of this was some kind of childhood trauma and this trauma allowed something to enter into this person's body because of course this is spiritual advice. So you always have to look at everything from an energetic spiritual level which means, you know, we say we are descended from animals, right? And then we say it's like an elephant shrew is our closest relative and then, you know, before there was a chimpanzee or whatever it is now that is our closest relative. And then we say, you know, because of this, you know, you have animal needs. Yes, your body, you could say, is kind of the animal body. But when we say we are descended, then we, it's more accurate to say, you know, we are descendants from heaven. Because we descended, you know, it's to ascend. Maybe when you die, you ascend back into heaven. And when you descend, you come from something above. And you know, what the body is, it's like mother nature, right? The emotional side. And then what the spirit is, is what came from God. It came from up there, down to earth. You know, you're down to earth. You're like grounded. Why are you grounded? And why do we say grounded in terms of, you know, forcing somebody to stay somewhere? You know, you're not leave, allowed to leave the house, so you're grounded. You know, you have to stay in your room. You're grounded. So maybe we're grounded in this body because we have to make certain experiences here. And that is certainly meant to help us realize who we truly were. And it's that eternal game of hide and seek where you have to remember, okay, who am I actually? Because you're constantly trying to hide from yourself and from your godly nature. So 
you're being put in that body and that body is prone to sin your soul is actually fine but it's the body that more or less suffers because you pick up energies and then you start defining yourself with them and then it's your job to keep the energy flowing so that the energy can also leave the body again because otherwise you will get very sick and it's then actually the body that tries to rid itself of all these destructive energies and it might do so in the form of you know a flu or some kind of you know because it's actually it's in the end it's still it's not the virus but it's the symptoms because you have symptoms you say it must be a virus right there must be something making me sick and then you don't look at oh wait what's making me sick is actually the way I live and the way I think no no it must be something from the outside so I need to take something from the outside and put it onto the inside but it's actually you know the change that you need is on the out it's, <laughs> it's on the inside and you might induce change by changing things on your outside so you for example you have a TV at home and you keep watching that and it makes you sick but you don't realize it so why don't you go and take that TV and put it away and then you see suddenly how you can induce change on the inside by forcing change onto you from the outside. So then you can also say Corona is like, you know, the universe first forcing change onto us from the outside. Because whatever it is, right, but Corona did change something. And I don't think it's necessarily changing what we think it changed. But it did show who's a coward and who's not. I think some people, they walk around with their big fat egos and they say, you know, I'm awesome, you know, I'm not afraid. And then something like Corona comes and suddenly, you know, you see who's afraid of death. You see who's afraid to die. Who, you see suddenly who's always afraid of other people. And it's just Corona that brings it out. Because the way you react to something shows who you truly are. Because your actions show who you truly are. And then you have some people that just stay as relaxed as always. Well, what does it say about them? Well, they were already, you know, true to themselves. They didn't change because of Corona. But maybe Corona gave them the room to change more. Because suddenly they were forced, you know, to work from home. So they had more time for themselves. So they actually, they could figure out certain things that they wanted to do with their life. And that's how I see this entire thing. And I think that's, you know, it's probably more than enough opinion, right? That I can put into this episode, into this recording. For anyone to say, he's spreading false information on the coronavirus pandemic. Well, did he actually say that it's all a, you know, bunch of fucking nonsense? Well, he might have hinted on it, right? But he didn't really say that. So shit, we can't really do anything because unless he's like really saying it, because after all, you know, it is kind of his opinion and maybe we want YouTube to stand for, you know, freedom of speech rather than oppression of people and enforcing of opinions onto people. So how should we deal with this? Because he's kind of an okay guy, right? And he talks about these things and he says these things, but what to make of it? What should we do? Well, blame him anyway, because he surely has done something wrong in his life. Well, so did everybody. You know, I'm not the exception. I'm there's just exceptionally bold and <laughs> exceptionally true. And in the end, it's just words. And, you know, if you're trying to nail me down on the things I say, then you're forgetting one fact, because the things I do is, I'm kind of spreading happiness onto a very depressing topic. Because I can see it as something, you know, that's like, you know, it's, it's kind of alright, it just depends on how you deal with it. And if you're afraid of it, rather, you know, stop projecting your fear onto the virus, but just acknowledge that you have fear and then start working with it. And of course, for that, I can only refer, refer you to the book I wrote, the book of fear. I'll also look at the Fearful Planet series. And, you know, you just start educating yourself about the topic that is fear.
here. And that's all I can say in this moment because if you don't work with your fear, your fears are surely going to work with you and uh, you may not want that.